Hi, it's Wednesday, and I was going to have a, a time to sit with you and talk and chat while I was um, finishing up some works in progress. But inside, I was I just felt so unsettled, uh, and it has to do with the fact that my creative space is very unorganized. Uh, it behind me is fairly organized, but here in front of me and on my desk, I have all of these, you know, like partial things of yarn that I know if I just set them on a shelf, they're going to get all discombobulated and knotted up and I'm going to be unhappy with that. And uh, so... I, in fact, I already have one right here in front of me that I'm working on. This Cranberry Red is the name of it, that was um, partially used and it fell off my desk. And then when I picked it up, I mean, it, it just was a mess. And so I'm trying to cake it up and straighten it out. And, but I, today I'm abundantly aware that inside that I'm feeling very disorganized and uh, chaotic. My thoughts are just all over the place. Um, I mean, it, to some degree, that's part of the creative energy. But if that energy doesn't get focused in a um, direction to where it can become something that I can even get an idea down on paper or a sketch or something like that, or even uh, even if I have the design already down on paper, if I can't choose a color palette because my yarn is all over the place, well, then it's of no use to, uh, you know, have all that um, information in your head, but it's unorganized. You know, it's like a, a an office or a desk where the papers are just all over the place and the file cabinet's over there with the folders, but the stuff is not in the folders. And that's the way my head is right now. I have all this information and it's not filed anywhere because I have all this yarn that's just all over the place. So I'm trying to get organized and uh, because I will not give myself permission to finish my works in progress until I get this space organized first. You know what I have a tendency to do when it gets to this place is uh, then whatever project I'm working on, I'll just pick up, I, I store my works in progress in some type of a container. Some of them are plastic like shoe boxes. It depends on the size of the project. And I generally have the um, hook in there with it and, and the remaining yarn that I've already bought for that project. I keep it all together. And the reason I put the yarn in there too is because oftentimes it's a dye lot. And so I keep it all together. I also put it away in there so that I don't pick it up and start another project with it. And then when I go back to that unfinished object, I've used all the yarn. And then the next thing, you know, that will happen is you go to get the yarn. It's still available, but not in the dye lot that you had. And so the color doesn't match. And so that's the way I store it. So I have all these things. And if I have an extra hook in that size, the hook's in there too. But I'll tell you what I do uh, for my uh, projects. Because uh, oftentimes I'm using my same favorite, either six or six and a half millimeter hook. And so I will either put a sticky note in there to what hook that I'm using, size hook, or sometimes I, I um, just pick up my phone and take a photo of the hook and the project behind it. And then I know that that is the hook that I used with that, um, that project whenever I pick it back up again. Recently, I laid something down and for a week or so and then went back to it and the, and the hook uh, was separated from it because I probably picked it up and put, took it to make something else with. So I picked up another blue hook because I knew I had used a blue hook and so I thought it was the 5.5 millimeter blue hook 
And when I picked up the other hook, it was a 5.75 millimeter. And that doesn't sound like it would make much difference, but it did. I mean, I can see where it made a difference in the project. Probably 99% of the rest of the population on earth wouldn't um, even notice it, but I noticed it anyway. So there is that. I always, uh, and um, I even try to use the exact same hook. I don't pick up another 5.5 and this is why. I've learned that with uh, what's called an ergonomic hook, you know, I like the straight hooks, but an ergonomic hook, I crochet differently. And it's because the, the depth of the throat. So with a hook like this, I crochet differently than if I had the same size hook in a straight hook. So if I start out with an ergonomic handle hook, I finish that project with this because I crochet differently with it. And I, uh, again, many of these lessons I found out the hard way. I'm, I'm really feeling the need to get those works in progress done. The, uh, the thing that it does for me is uh, when I have a lot of things on the back burner of my mind, I can't move forward. And uh, it's, it's as if I, am, I don't give myself permission to move forward. I insist that um, that get done first before I do something in the future. I guess in a way it's like um, if, I, if I'm cooking and I'm cooking something, you know, braising a roast or something that takes several hours and it's simmering on the back burner, well, I, I'm not going to give myself permission to, you know, run to Hobby Lobby <laughs> or run to Joann's because I can't leave that thing simmering on the back burner and be gone. And I, I think in a way that that's the way unfinished objects, the works in progress are for me too. I can't move forward until I take care of the past. And um, so I have these things uh, and they're all baby blankets, by the way. And so a couple of things are going on. I have a tremendous amount of yarn. Most of it is acrylic. I would like to move forward into summer and use some other fibers that are um, more breathable for summer. Uh, some cotton, some hemp, um, bamboo, any of those. But uh, I just, in my mind, again, I'm not giving myself permission to purchase any yarn until I work through some of this acrylic yarn. Now, it's true, not too long ago, I had a giveaway and I was able to uh, move some yarn out of my uh, storage and give to you guys. And that was, uh, I was so happy to do it. It brings me a great deal of joy to uh, share yarn, give yarn to others. And um, that was a lot of fun but I have uh, so much yarn that I have in my mind, I have a plan. I don't always just buy a, you know, go and buy yarn without a plan. I, or I go in the store and they're like recently, um, Joann's had the, the uh, it was a BOGO. You bought three um, skeins of any yarn and the fourth one was free, which is 25% off. And so whenever I went down the aisle, I um, gathered the yarn and I had a, a rough plan in mind of what I was gonna do with that yarn. And of course, you know, that helps to buy enough yarn that way. Um, and so that's where I'm at. I've got two knots in this yarn. I'm going to cut them the knotted part off and then put it that over in my trash. I have a yarn trash little vase and I save all these little pieces and whenever I do a pillow or something that needs stuffing, I put my yarn in as stuffing you, and, and some polyfill too. But that's what I do with that. All right, so one skein down 
or partial skein down. He was a little one, but I have a, a bigger one. My um, yarn winder, I can do about eight ounces. And then if there's more yarn to wind, then I, I cut it and um, get start a new little ball. And so this is a little bitty one. This is probably about two ounces, two or three. Oh, yeah, getting those baby blankets done. And I want to use up a bunch of acrylic yarn. So what's coming next on the channel? I want to do projects that use a lot of yarn. And since I have these baby blankets that I want to finish up, that'll be the first thing. I'm going to do the works in progress. Even with those, there will still be some tutorials because I will be able to uh, show either a joining method or I can show an edging and trim. Um, and then we will start some brand new baby blankets so that um, we can learn some new stuff. Uh, and I have some baby blanket designs in mind that for a year or so I've wanted to... Um, I've wanted to make something like that, you know, and so I, um, I want to bring some of that. All right, when you don't pay attention to your yarn winder, when you're trying to make a video and winding yarn at the same time, sometimes the yarn gets all knotted up on the yarn winder as it has done now. In fact, it has completely tied itself in a knot Anyway, I got it fixed. Okay. Back to the baby blankets. I have seen some designs um, that I, oh, I can do that. And so um, I'm going to do, uh, do some of those designs. New baby blanket designs. There was also a request on the channel uh, for uh, corner to corner. And there again, there must be probably 50 videos online for the corner to corner method, but I'll show you the way I do it. <clears throat> I don't know that I do it any different than anyone else, but nonetheless, um, I'll do it because for uh, my charity baby blankets, quite frequently they're a corner to corner. For one thing, I think the corner-to-corner -corner, um, it lends itself to easily to um, a baby blanket because it doesn't have so many holes in it. I would never make a granny square blanket for a baby. That's just my personal choice because it has so many holes in it and um, they it can get their little fingers and toes hung in it. Well, the thing that they call a solid granny square, I will do a solid square um, for a baby blanket. And in fact, I do, and I like to use multiple colors, do uh, some type of a spiral, two, three, or four different yarn spirals, and they're really cute for a baby blanket. I also, there again, I like to go back to the um, corner to corner. I like to do a corner to corner block um, baby blanket with uh, four or five colors, um, baby colors, pastels, or primaries. Primary colors, you know, are fine also, I think. Where, but, and then join the next different color to it. I like, I'm going to demonstrate how I do that. And that still creates all one project. You don't have to um, join the blocks together after they're finished. You build the new block right onto the original block. And that's a fun uh, method. But I also have another corner to corner that I incorporate uh, the rainbow colors in after you put in the sky and the cloud. This one is a very simple and basic graphigan. And I thought that would be fun to um, introduce um, newcomers to graphigans, newcomers to corner to corner, and um, it would just be fun and something different that we can do. This is so that I can use up a lot of yarn and finish my works in progress because that'll make me feel better in my head. So that's where I'm at. You know, crochet as a mental health tool, 
I've learned just recently uh, it, uh, it can work in the positive and the negative. If I get too many uh, things going that are not finished, it works negatively. And I need a haircut. I keep knocking that hair out of my eyes, nonetheless. Anyway, if uh, I have too many things unfinished, it works negatively and I don't, um, I don't do well. So there is that. And then again, there again, I get so much creative energy at, like it happened on the Fiesta hexagon cardigan that I couldn't sleep at night. I could sleep three or four hours, but then I had to get up and work on that project and project and, and uh, so there is that. So I think eventually, you know, the channel for me is still, I'm, I'm still new to it. And all this creative energy that's come about as a result of it, I think it'll kind of calm down eventually. And uh, it'll just be life as normal, life as usual. And I'll get a pace that I can, and a, a direction that I can be more consistent with. I am well aware that uh, Take a Stitch Tuesday and Freeform Fridays, uh, I guess I could say that um, I'm, I've gotten behind, but I don't want to think like that uh, because uh, it is what it is. I'm, uh, I do what makes me, what brings me joy. And uh, making the tutorials that I've been making, that's what's bringing me joy at the current time. So um, I'm not going to think that I've gotten behind on anything. I will get back to it when that brings me joy. When I first started, I, um, you know, I laid out these plans for me not yet, uh, you know, without having done investigation to realize that uh, how much time that it takes, number one, to uh, video, and number two, to edit. And then that has to be done before you can upload it. And um, even the uploading, uh, my phone is is my camera and it's not usable when it's uploading a video and some of the videos the long form has uh it takes an hour to upload it so all of those things i i had to learn and so um that being said as a result then some of the things that i thought i was going to be able to uh, keep up hasn't been possible because there's just so much time. But as I said, uh, I'm going to do what brings me joy and what um, gives me energy and creativity. And so that's what I'm doing. Another thing that is on the back burner of my mind that I, I want to get to also is the um, the fancy shawl. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, in the garden because it will be a floral. And since it's summertime, I'm going to make it a summer theme. And I have a beautiful design in mind. It won't be exactly like the gray and black and uh, white one that uh, was the prototype for that type of a shawl with three-dimensional flowers. But nonetheless, it, it's it's going to be beautiful. It's just going to be different. There is a um, part of me that doesn't like to do the same thing repeatedly. Uh, now, I will take a basic shape like the hexagon cardigan. I will make more than one of those, but they will all be different. Same with the shawl. I want them to all be different. And uh, for summer, I want to bring some lacy shawls that are just 
beautiful all by themselves without further um, embellishment. And uh, I'm working on one of those right now. Um, but the tutorial is not ready. So I have some things working um, that are coming up. And I have gotten my pace I and my routine. I will upload at least one tutorial a week and keep up a few shorts too. If you haven't already um, subscribed to my channel, I hope you will do that. I've got a birthday coming up very soon and it would thrill me to have 3,000 subscribers by then. And now, I don't even know if that's possible. Under Honestly, I don't even know how I got as many subscribers as, as I have. And I feel uh, abundantly blessed in that. But, uh, yeah, for my birthday, if I could almost double what I have now, that would be fine. And I that would please me and, and be a really, uh, you know, that would be a birthday present that uh, I've never received before. And a worthy goal that I want to work toward. And my birthday is in the middle of May. So, uh, by the middle of May, I hope to have 3,000 subscribers. So, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. And I will do my part in continuing to bring content. And uh, I appreciate your patience with me. In uh, I'm getting better and I know that there is even more to learn, and I'm continuing to learn more and more about that uh, that is valuable to you. The value to me is the fact that I'm passing on an, an art that I, I feel like someday is going to be by the wayside. So far, they've not been able to um, have a machine that crochets, but, you know, Times change. So I feel like that crochet, um, I want to pass on what I know. Uh, I don't want to write a book. And uh, because it, uh, we can read as many crochet books as we can, as the library has. But until we actually do it, we know nothing. So crochet is a learn by doing, regardless of how many books that you read. Regardless of how many tutorials you see, crochet is learned by doing. Until you pick up the crochet hook and the yarn and, and begin to make those loops and knots, you haven't, you haven't done it. You haven't learned a thing. So I want to pass on what I know and I'm um, daily working on getting better and uh, explaining better, you know, until you make a, a YouTube or a tutorial of any type, coming up with the words to describe what we're doing, or I'm what? having to work on that uh, script, so to speak, and uh, be able to explain what I'm doing as well as demonstrate it. And most of us in the textile arts, we are visual learners. But um, the more senses that we use to learn something, uh, the more likely it will become permanent knowledge. And, but also, I'm abundantly aware uh, that if I cannot explain something with words, then I don't know it truly know it in my innermost being. So that's something that I've become aware of since I uh, have had the desire to pass on what I know in crochet. And, and that is, if I can't explain it, then do I really know it? If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I hope you will. And um, come back and I will have even more tutorials uh, you know really and truly my uh one of my taglines so to speak is less talk and more crochet i i don't want to do long introductions 
because again, just like I said with crochet, it's a it's the only way you get it is by doing it. So um, less talk and more crochet. I did enjoy um, brain dumping, so to speak, with you today because it, it was good for me. It's a good mental workout for me to uh, get this out. And you know, uh, where I am in my life today, I don't have anybody else that uh, I can talk to about crochet that has the faintest idea <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, the only thing that even my spouse knows about uh, crochet is the fact that it's the hook and all that yarn that's in my crochet room. That's about all he knows about uh, crochet. So, I appreciate your listening, and I hope you'll come back, and let's um, stitch along with one another. Until I see you again. Keep calm and crochet on.